This is Mr. Smith, and here's another hit film for Express tutorial. Now, the target audience for this tutorial does happen to be my media arts students, but this should be useful for other people as well. Just keep in mind who the target audience is. Now, we're going to start off by showing the effect that most of my students are interested in, and that would be chroma key, sometimes referred to as green screening or blue screening. I have recorded myself stepping in front of a green screen, out of focus a little bit, but I look over, I give a thumbs up, and I walk away. I also recorded myself up closer because I happen to be wearing a hoodie that has bright green laces on it, and that creates an interesting effect. Now, to handle this, first got to look up at these corners. I was a little bit too far away from the green screen with my camera, and that can be annoying. There's ways to mask that out, but I'm going to save that for another recording. Instead, this time, we're just going to zoom in a little bit, and that is fairly easy to do. If I hold down the control key and use the scroll wheel, I can change my perspective on here. That doesn't actually change anything about how big the video is, just about how big it's appearing on the screen. And if I click and drag, now you can see I can change the proportions. That's not exactly what I want to be doing. But if I hold the shift key down, it keeps everything equal. So let's undo that, hold the shift key down, and drag. And we have zoomed in enough that I don't think I'm going to have a problem anymore. And it really wasn't that much work. So we should be good. All right, now on to the actual adding of the green screen effect or chroma key effect. If I go over to the effects tab, now it's in here, but the fastest way to find an effect is usually just by typing it in. So I type in key and I have a bunch of things going on here. It's under presets. We've got blue screen and green screen. So I could do these effects manually, but it's so much easier to just take this, drag it over to the thing that I want to be invisible, let go, and ta-da. Now I'm in front of a green screen. Works pretty good, right? Except if you have green in your original video that you didn't want to be invisible, then you start having clouds and things show through. Now it's worth noting that this looks very obviously fake. I do have that problem because the lighting on me is so much different than the lighting in the picture. Ideally, you're going to be chroma keying in something with similar lighting effects, and therefore it's going to look a little more real. Life goes on if you don't have that, however. Now you'll notice in HitFilm that the sky that I brought in is on a track below the track with the chroma key effect. Some editors have the background be above, some editors have the background be below. In this case, HitFilm has it be below. But there's things we can do with this too. Let's take this sky and put it in front of everything. And I thought of this because of how blue that sky is. I wanted to see if it would work. Let's just take the blue screen key, throw it in here. And now, in addition to having the sky be behind me, I also have the sky in front of me, and I'm walking through the clouds. Pretty awesome. I approve. Other effects you can do. There are transitions. I try not to use them too much. It is very easy to overuse effects. Something to keep in mind when doing post-production. Something that you should really keep in mind. I don't like to repeat myself, but in this case, it's important. Is just because you can do all these different effects does not mean you should on every video, on every occasion where you can do them. Uh, this is most often seen with effects like transitions, uh, dissolves, motion blurs, wipes, zooming in and out, fading from one color to another. The iris effect is a common overused effect. Try to avoid these in most cases. They will end up being a distraction for your audience where they spend less time focusing on your plot and what you're trying to convey and more time on, oh, that's a neat effect. You might think it looks cool, and it will look cool. But if it gets in the way of what you're trying to show in your video, 
then its coolness ends up being a problem, not a help. Now if you add an effect you don't want, just click on the effect in the controls panel after you've clicked on the thing that's selected and you should be able to press delete and it goes away. I can do the same thing with the chroma key here. Now this was three effects so I have to delete each one individually or I can hold down shift and select more than one, press delete and now the chroma key is gone. So no effect will permanently ruin any clip that you're editing. You can always undo those with a simple delete or a simple drag and adjust. There are other neat things in here, including neat little renders that are under Quick 3D, including smoke, rain, all kinds of stuff. I could have it be raining in my pictures. Now you'll notice some of these will create a new tab over here. That's because they are a composite shot which is kind of neat, but sometimes when you drag them over, if you drag them on top of a clip, it'll actually replace that clip. So control Z that away. Let's take that rain effect and put it on top of everything. And now, thumbs up for the rain. Yay, go me. So that's the basics of effects. It's pretty straightforward. Most of the difficult stuff I've already talked about in my previous video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.